I was instantly drawn in to this little fucked up family. I thought it was- Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my July wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 15 books this month so I am splitting this wrap up into three different parts. This is part three out of three so if you're interested in the other 10 books that I read this month then be sure to check out the other two videos and without further ado let us get started. The first book that I have to talk about is The Romance Recipe by Ruby Barrett. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Amy Chambers whose restaurant is failing so she decides to take a chance in hiring Sophie Burnett who is a former cooking reality show finalist in the hopes that her popularity online will bring new customers to the restaurant. Little did she know that there would be an undeniable connection between the two of them but a lot of as well. When the opportunity for the restaurant to be featured on a new up-and-coming show, Amy and Sophie must begin to work together in order to save the restaurant before it's too late. This is everything that I wanted in Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly, which was another cooking reality TV show romance which just fell so flat for me. This one, on the other hand, ooh baby, I was here for it. It was such a fun grumpy sunshine pairing and I was rooting for them right from the beginning. The tension between these two was ridiculous. Their longing stares across the restaurant was everything I needed and more and when they finally acted on it I was so happy for them. We get the point of view of both Sophie and Amy which I thought was an amazing way to tell this story because we really got to know each of the characters and their own personal struggles that they were dealing with. I will say that I enjoyed Sophie's voice a lot more than Amy's. Amy's kind of frustrated me a little bit especially when she started making decisions for Sophie and never really talked to her about it. That just like did not fly with me but I do think that Amy had some amazing character development by the end of the story so so she definitely did grow on me as the story progressed. I think that Sophie is a very relatable character. I think that she's going to be very important to people who are questioning their sexuality or coming into their sexuality late to the game. I really loved the conversation about self-acceptance and queer identity and I think that it was really well done. This book also contains a lot of steamy scenes that I think were very well done and definitely helped with the chemistry between these two characters. So overall, I give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Definitely recommend it if you're wanting some steamy cooking romances. Next up, I have Just Like Mother by Anne Hetzel. This is another one I gave 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Maeve, who 20 years ago escaped and fled from the cult that she was raised in. She left behind the only friendship she ever knew, which was was with her cousin. She has been searching for her ever since that night and she has finally reconnected with her. As Maeve begins to spend more time with Andrea and her husband Rob as well as their rich friends, she quickly realizes that their lives are very different from each other. This was a really creepy and atmospheric read right from the beginning. I was instantly drawn in to this little fucked up family. I thought it was really interesting to see the flashbacks of the girls lives in the cult and how that affected how they grew up. I think that the tension grew very quickly in the story and remained throughout the entire thing which just made it even more creepy. I do think that a lot of the twists and turns in this book were very predictable and I was able to call very early on but it didn't really hinder from my enjoyment of the story just because it was so messed up you wanted to keep reading to know what was going to happen next. I also think that the ending was really well done. I did not see that coming so that was really nice. I will say that there are a lot of trigger warnings in this so definitely definitely look them up before you pick this book up because I feel like it could be a lot for some people so just be aware. But overall I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I have a Georgie Darcy novel called Accomplished. This is by Amanda Quain and I end up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. This book follows Georgiana Darcy who is the most hated girl at Pemberley Academy after she avoided being expelled last year when she was caught up in a drug scam with popular boy Wickham Foster. She must now prove to her older brother Fitz that she is able to make him proud without tarnishing the Darcy name in her junior year. She thinks it's not going to be that hard until Wickham tries to weasel his way back into her 
heart and it's the story of that. I was really disappointed in this. I thought it was very very slow and I never truly became invested in the story because of this. I also was not the biggest fan of Georgiana. She rubbed me the wrong way throughout the majority of the book. She just gave off very poor little rich girl vibes. She did end up getting called out at the end of the book which was nice and she did go through some character development but I think at that point I was just so fed up with her character that I didn't care and it really hindered my enjoyment of the story so I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5. The next book I have is Into the Dying Light by Katie Rose Poole. This is the third and final book in the Age of Darkness trilogy and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This is an extremely character driven story and I did really love all of the characters. Jude and Anton are still definitely my favorite of this series but I will say that I think that I did a injustice for this series because I read the two first books a while ago and I honestly did not remember a lot of the details from those two books which made me a little bit confused going into the third one. I honestly probably should have reread the two first books. I think that this series is one that needs to be binge read to get the full experience. I thought that it took a very long time for me to become invested in this third installment. It was very slow to begin with and it began to drag very quickly because it is such a long book but I am happy with where the characters ended up. I think that it was a great conclusion to the story but like I said it was just a bit too long to hold my attention fully so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I have is Her Romeo by Quinn Marlowe. This is the first in the Mafia Rogues series which follows Sloane Brennanen who is the daughter of the Irish Mafia Don and Joseph the son of the rival gang. Joseph is ordered by his father to kidnap Sloane and take her to Italy where he is going to drop her off with another Mafia Don. When he arrives, he realizes that he cannot leave Sloane alone because her life is in danger. Since they have a very complicated past with one another, he decides that he is going to stay and keep watch over her until she can be returned safely to her father in New York. I was a little bit disappointed in this one after reading the prequel last month. I really enjoyed that one. I just felt that this one was not as good as the prequel. I still really love the concept of the son and daughter from rival mafia clans falling in love. You know, we're here for the forbidden love romance aspect of it. But I found it to be very repetitive very quickly. We get the point of view from both Sloan and Joseph, which was a great way to see into their minds, but basically their inner monologue was just, I hate him, but I love him. I love her, but she hates me and we can't be together, and it was just really annoying after about 10 pages. I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit intrigued with where the story is going to end because we are left on a huge cliffhanger, so we don't know if Sloane and Joseph make it out from Italy alive. We have to read the second book in order to find out. So, I will be picking up the second book because I want to know, but overall, just very repetitive, and I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the last five books that I read out of the 15 in July 2022. If you're interested in the other 10 books that I read, I will leave the two videos down below for you to check out. Let me know what you read this month and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!